explosives? Yeah, there's tons of grenades and shells. Where does that door lead to? Well, that leads to the base, but there's nothing down there. There's one of our planes making a landing now. You better get out of here while you can. north of here. Let's travel. to say that place was bombed from the air. Well, I checked with a man who lives about two miles from the place. He claims he saw an airplane circling around there just before the explosion. Well, if that's true, it's a pretty serious situation. Oh, by the way, uh, where did you get the information that the Green Hornet was there? Oh, just a wild theory of the police. Oh, sure, Lauer is wrong about that. The police told me that when they got there right after the explosion, they heard the Hornet's car pulling away. Here we go again. Expert in the Green Hornet. And why should I not suspect him? Sure, he's mixed up with every devilish thing that happens in the city. Well, I haven't changed my opinion of the Hornet. I still think that he's a public-spirited citizen, risking his life to help make this city a better place to live in. Oh, Casey, sure, you try me patience. If he is, why doesn't he come in and identify himself and work with the police? And get himself arrested. Well, they'll catch up with him someday. And discover that he's a modern Robin Hood. Or a clever racketeer. Sure, and I'm believing that's just what he is. All right, Michael. Right now, I have a job for you. Oh, that's fine. And Lowry. What is it? We've got to find out what that warehouse was used for. I want you fellows to go out there and search the wreckage of the place thoroughly. Well, leave it to us. We won't pass up a thing. In the meantime, I'll try to find out who owned and operated it. Yes, sir. You know, Case, that explosion may be part of a widespread plot. It's up to us to find out. Yes, sir. What's the matter with you and your men, Tower? Between the Green Hornet, Britt Reed, and his newspapers, they're making monkeys out of all of you. Listen, Chief, I'll admit the Green Hornet has outsmarted us at every turn. He certainly has. And we still don't know how much he's found out about the warehouse. I sent Dolan and DeLuca over there to destroy any evidence that they could find in the wreckage that would give the police a clue. They should have been back long ago. What held you up? Oh, we had a run-in with a couple of Britt Reed's reporters. They got away with some broken rifles and were trying to get away with this box. They found the ruins. Well, why didn't you get away with them? Oh, we would have if the police hadn't interfered. It's a good thing they didn't get away with this box. What's in it? Invoices from the Grimbolt Steel Plant. You don't think those reporters found anything from those broken rifles, do you? Certainly not. Why do you suppose I had this stuff made without serial numbers or manufacturers' names? It'd be tough to have an investigation of the Grimbolt Plant now. If they did, it would cripple the greatest racket that was ever thought of. That is, if Weaver's invention is a success. You're right. Every nation in the world will be bidding for it, including this one. They won't have a chance to bid for it. I've already closed a deal at my own terms. You don't mean to say that you're not going to give this country a chance to get in on it. Why do you think I've been guarding Weaver's invention with such secrecy? I understand. 
When's it going to be ready for a test? Some night this week. Yes? This is Manning at the Grimbold. Go ahead, Manning. Listen, Krogan, we just had another accident. An electrician named Carter killed. I'm telling you again, this stuff of weavers is too dangerous to handle. I know it's dangerous, but we've got to proceed. Report Carter's death in the usual way and send some flowers to the funeral. Boy, we're sure knocking them over in that lab. Two chemists and three electricians. It's got me worried. I don't want anybody to start asking embarrassing questions. There aren't any clues here. One minute, please. This might lead to something. Where did you find it? Among the warehouse wreckage. What is it? Well, it's a, a shipping tag from, from the Grimbold Steel Plant. That's the place where they've been having so many fatal accidents lately. You dig up all the information you can about the place. Yes, sir. There's a Mrs. Carter outside, and she insists on seeing you. Well, have her come right in. Now, go ahead and let me know as soon as you get that information on the Grimbold Steel Plant. Yes, sir. Come on, kid. I'll give you another lesson. Yes, sir. Well, you... <laughs> Mrs. Carter. How do you do? How do you do? Won't you be seated? Thank you. What can I do for you? Mr. Reed, you and your paper have helped bring to light so many terrible conditions in town. Well, I thought there was something you ought to know. Well, concerning what, Mrs. Carter? It's, uh... It's about the Grimball steel mills. Grim? Oh, do you know anything about it? Only that they've had several fatal accidents there recently. Yes. My husband was just killed there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Carter. I didn't want him to take the job because he wasn't a steel worker. But they offered him such high wages he couldn't refuse. You say he wasn't a steel worker? No. He was an electrician. They were using him in, in some kind of a laboratory on experiments. An electrical laboratory. You may depend upon it that I'll do all I can to help. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Carter. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Reed. Did you get the information? Yes, sir. The Grimbold plant shut out for six months due to financial troubles. A man named Eldridge took it over for some syndicate. For the past few months, they've been operating at full blast. Uh, war orders? Looks that way. Michael, check with all the leading engineering and construction firms. Find out what they know about Grimbold. I'll do that right away. They'll probably tell us all we want to know. Uh, nothing. Anything for me, boss? Yes, Lowry. You and I are going to drive out to the Grimbold plant. I'm with you, boss. Oh, I'm thinking I ought to go with you, boss. We won't need you, pipsqueak. This is a man's job. Now, see here. I... Oh, I'm gonna knock you loose, one of the... I... I'd like to see Mr. Eldridge. Will you tell him that it's Britt Reed, uh, the Sentinel, and Mr. Lowry, one of his reporters? I've said for Manning, you can tell him yourself. How are you, Manning? Hey, Manning, there's been too many beefs about the accidents around here. You've got to clamp down. Yeah? Who? Hold him there till I call you back. Britt Reed and a reporter outside. They want to see me. What a break for me. Tell them to come in. I'm going to call Krogan first and get his advice. This is Eldridge. Britt Reed and a reporter are here. Yeah, they want to see me. Come to investigate the accidents we've been having, I suppose. Well, this is a chance we've been looking for. We've got to let them in, but as to Reed's getting out, well, that's up to you. I understand. A well, tower's here. He can handle it. All kinds of accidents can happen around a steel plant. Tower, here's your chance. And will I use it? You let Dolan handle the ladle crane. He knows how to operate it. Tower can give him the signals from the catwalk. I got you, boss. I'll show Mr. Reed the operation of the open hearth. That's it. I'll place your men and come back to my office. Weaver talking. Listen, Weaver. Stop all work in your lab for the next half hour. 
Turn out all your lights. All right, Mr. Eldridge. Now let Mr. Reed and the reporter come in. All right, Dolan. Get up in that crane cab. Send the man that's running it to my office. Don't forget to watch for my signal. We can't afford to miss this time. Come in, gentlemen. Mr. Reed, I'm glad for this opportunity to congratulate you on the splendid work your paper's been doing. Thanks. This is Mr. Lowry. How are you? How do you do? Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Come in. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Eldridge. Well, all right. Come in, come in. I want you to meet Mr. Reed and Mr. Lowry of the Sentinel. How do you do? Mr. Manning, our superintendent. How do you do? I presume, Mr. Reed, the object of your visit is to look over the plant. Yes. What particular product does your plant turn out? Oh, steel rods, structural steel, aeroplane engine blocks, etc. Are you manufacturing any arms or munitions? Oh, not yet. But we're preparing to. I'm leaving for Europe tomorrow to meet my partners who are over there now, drumming up business. You have a laboratory in connection with your mill, haven't you? Yes. But it's closed just now. You closed it because of the many fatal accidents you've been having? Not exactly. Most of our accidents occur in the steel mills. You know, it's a very hazardous work. Yes, I presume so. I think it would be a very good idea if I were to show these gentlemen the kind of work we're doing in the open hearth. Quite right. How about it, Mr. Reed? I think that would be interesting. All right, gentlemen. Those cars you see there are rolling into the charging buggy. Now, what's the matter with that fellow? He's got hot milk cramps. Due to drinking too much water around these furnaces. He'll come out all right. Charging an open heart. Thank goodness you're okay, boss. You all right? Yeah. Sorry, Reed. I wouldn't have had this happen for the world. Sometimes these ladles slip. Our men are always on the lookout. They have good reason to be. I don't think I'm in shape to do any more sightseeing today. I can understand how you feel. Another day, perhaps we can take it up where we left off. Thanks. to be buried in a mold of steel. How does a thing like that happen? Hot milk cramps. Do many men lose their lives that way? Only a few new hands. Most of the accidents happen now and they laugh. The laugh? Where is the laugh? Back of the building. Come on, Laurie, let's take a look. It's all locked up. The head chemist we were stopped working about a half an hour ago. Anyone work around here at night? I'll let the watchman and a few workers stand in the furnaces. Thanks. Hey, there's Eldridge. Looks like he and Manning are having a squabble. I think I've seen about enough for today. <laughs> Me too. What do you think of the place, boss? They ought to do something about safeguarding the men who work there. Yeah, and the people who visit there, too, judging from the accident that almost got us. That was no accident. Say... You don't think that was an attempt on your life, do you? I'm afraid it was. That fellow deliberately jumped by me to knock you in the clear. 
Maybe you're right. But people do a lot of funny things when they get excited. Yeah. Manning wasn't excited. See, you know, I was... Tonight, Cato, the Green Hornet's going to find out what they're making in that carefully guarded lab at the Grimble Steel Plant. A laboratory in a steel mill shouldn't be chemo-electrical. Oh, your gas gun, Mr. Britt. Looks good, Mr. Brett. I'll go ahead. You follow at a distance. Something. Thought it might be backfired from one of our trucks coming in. Have Bill check up in the yard. Did you see Pete? No, I think he was punching his round. Pete, what happened? The, the, what happened? Get some water, quick. With your hands in the clear. What do you want? Who are you? The Green Hornet. Yes. Now answer my questions if you value your life. Are you in charge of this lab? Yes. Yes, I'm the... I'm the chief chemist here. Why are there so many fatal accidents here? Speak up. We're working with very dangerous chemicals. What are you making? I... I cannot tell you. I'm sworn to secrecy. You are going to tell me. What are you making? An anti-aircraft bomb. Why should that work be so dangerous? Don't lie to me. Give me the details. I, I can't tell you. It's a government secret. What government? Answer me. I, I, I can't tell you. They kill me. <laughs> 